when looking around our beautiful city of Madison, Wisconsin, it is easy to see the variety of life that exists here. Different types of trees, grass, flowers, animals, and of course, many different types of human beings. Now let's ponder this. For what reasons are organisms with these and not other traits present in our environment? The short answer is natural selection. Natural selection can be described as survival of the fittest, with the fittest being those with the most relative reproductive success. It describes how organisms carrying advantageous traits specific to their environment survive more often in a population, thus carrying on these advantageous traits to the next generation. We can trace this change in trait frequencies by comparing phenotype frequencies of different generations. A phenotype is the observable trait of an organism, while the genotype is an actual genetic makeup of an individual, generally focusing on one specific character. It is important to remember that natural selection acts on phenotypic traits, but what actually changes is the genotype. Natural selection can contribute to evolution in many ways, but we will be focusing on three. Directional selection, disruptive selection, and stabilizing selection. Let's take a playful look at each of these modes of selection in the context of our own population here at UW-Madison. As we all know, winters on the harsh, frozen tundra that is Wisconsin can be absolutely terrible. However, some individuals on campus happen to be born with traits that are advantageous in this extreme environment. Let's observe these two students in their native habitat. This thin individual with a very thin layer of fat for protection seems to be shivering. In contrast, this larger individual seems to be very warm and content. Oh no, it appears that the thin individual has actually died due to the frigid temperatures, and the warmer, larger individual has survived. This means that the thin individual will not be able to reproduce and pass on his genetic makeup to future offspring. This makes the larger individual more successful, and she will pass the advantageous trait of larger body onto the future generations. This is an example of directional selection, in which one extreme trait is favored, and thus there is a shift in the frequencies of phenotypes towards the extreme trait. In our next example, we will observe male and female college students in another frequent habitat, a party. The males are having a good time engaging in their mating dance, trying to attract a mate. Notice that the males are of varying heights. Let's introduce the females into this scene. It appears that the females prefer males of either very short or very tall stature, as the females preferring medium height men have migrated from this habitat. Males of the extreme heights have found mates. However, the male of medium height cannot attract a mate due to the female population's changing preferences in mate height. Sadly, this male will not find a mate, and will be unable to reproduce and pass on his genetic blueprint containing the phenotype for medium height. This is an example of disruptive selection, in which both extreme traits are favored and the moderate trait is at a disadvantage. This results in an increase in the frequencies of phenotypes toward the both extreme traits, creating a curve resembling a double bell curve. In our last example, we will observe a species of flowers native to the Madison campus, the Badgeria. Let's see how the flowers are surviving in this environment. The tall flower is less stable in this windy climate and is being damaged, while the short flower is not able to make enough food through photosynthesis to grow or survive since it is blocked from the sunlight by other taller flowers. Both flowers of the extreme traits will die off, thus inhibiting the passing on of their genotypes for tallness and shortness. However, the medium flower will likely be very successful. It is tall enough to get the right amount of sunlight, yet short enough to avoid wind damage. It will likely continue to reproduce and pass on its genotype to offspring. This will lead to an increase in frequency of the moderate phenotype and genotype, in this case, medium height and a decrease in the frequency of short and tall flowers. This is an example of stabilizing selection. It will be interesting to see how natural selection shapes the future population of Madison, Wisconsin.